Oh, what's up everybody once again it's Rain Man Sean and I'm back with another episode of Inside the Network where we share exclusive content from inside of brandmannetwork.com because I signed myself you know what it is now this is an exclusive collaboration between Brand Man Network and Music Entrepreneur Club we had a long about two hour conversation just doing a Q&A between members of each groups and this topic right here is something that you really need to check out not just the spam conversation that we start with but really the back end about how artists think like consumers and how you should flip it. And then I'll talk, you know, I add some sauce on it after that clip. So wait for it. Let's get into it. If you're going to spam, I would one, be very dope at whatever you're doing. So if you're driving somebody to a video, like make sure it's a dope ass video. Um, number two, make sure you do your research of where you're actually spending your effort to try to get this information in front of people. Number two, I mean, number three, I would have some unique messaging. A lot of people join our Facebook group and the first post they make, literally they don't post any words. It's just a link to their video. And that's just, just a waste of time because nobody's going to click on a link just because you posted it in there. It needs to have some type of messaging. I would try to bring it back, bring it back to your brand in some type of way. You know, even, even I'm always telling people to tell their story in every platform, right? Through your music, through your videos, through your merch, through your, through your live show, even through your spamming, right? So let, what do we know about you now in this message that you put on my page that I didn't want? Um, you know, I have a friend who, he's not in music, he's an actor. Um, he's actually on the show, The Mayans right now. Uh, but as he was coming up, he would always like tag, he's a big rock fan. So he was the rock, the actor, the rock. So he would always tag him in posts. Like he would take pictures and like clip his face and put it on the rock's face. Like he would do some <laughs> like really, really weird stuff. But in, in doing that, he's kind of sharing his story. A part of his story is the rock that he's a super fan of the rock. And I know that as he progresses at some point, he's going to meet the rock because you know, he's not putting all his eggs in the basket that he's going to meet the rock. Nah, he's busting his ass. He's actually doing some cool shit. And at some point, I think he's going to come across the rock, but he's been, he's been posting about that for like the last five years. And I just know at some point it's going to happen because he's, he's putting in the work. He's not just hoping and praying that he's going to meet the rock one day. He's probably going to be at an award show because he's been putting in his own work. Um, so tell your tell your story through your through your spamming as well is, is something I, I don't know if that was four or five but um, those would be my points. That, that's interesting, man. I I, I like that. Uh, one last thing before we kind of transition on this topic and it's kind of adjacent to this topic, but one thing this is the experience that I really went through, and I I was when I was in full um, on launch mode. That was for my festival, the very first festival that I did. It was when I really experienced this because I had been using all types of means, traditional means to build up audiences and all that stuff before. But my first festival, I was, I had no money, right? And this is a completely different thing that I was doing. And I was using Instagram primarily because I had no way to really break into this audience. So a big thing I did was post extremely heavily right leading up like two months up before and it was a, like i think i have videos probably up kind of talking about it and breaking down some of the process but a huge variety of content and all that type of stuff i essentially memed in the same in the same way people meme rappers and started to do that i back then i i turned the festival into a meme and provided a lot of content and entertainment through the meme and I did, I built it from zero to a thousand with just social media posts. And it was zero dollars because I was the one who had to create it, right? It just was, it was a lot of fucking time. And my point of it though, is when I first had to start to do it, I had to go through that, that thing that a lot of people ha uh, deal with, which is once again, this socialization of feeling weird that you're posting a lot. Right. And what, what are other people thinking? What are they, you have to kind of get out of that mode when I'm in serious, serious launch mode. And now I'm, I'm working on bigger and bigger levels, but 
like still when I'm in serious, serious launch mode, sometimes, no, not sometimes, all the times, if I don't feel uncomfortable, I pretty much feel like, dang, I must not be doing enough at this point. Because if I'm comfortable, I don't know what, what are these results actually going to look like, right? How do I know that I'm really taking over the community that I'm taking over? I, I feel like this is just me though, but, but I always feel like, man, I, I should almost wonder, am I annoying people? Am I, are, are there some people saying, yo, why, why do I keep seeing this? Can I stop seeing this ad or can I stop seeing this guy or I don't care about this festival or whatever else is going on? I should be able to get that level of omnipresence for whatever target that I'm getting, right? I could be doing the same amount of work. Some of it is doing it smarter, right? Cause I could obviously be doing, doing the same amount of work and targeting completely different spaces and areas. But in one particular pocket, I should be generating that much energy where it's almost a little uncomfortable if, if you're the type of person that I am. But that's just one thing to keep in mind because I know people get so self-conscious about what they're doing. But that right there, you can't think like a consumer. You can't think like a, a regular person who's like, oh, yeah, I got to post this one time and look cool. And like you aren't there like from from a business standpoint, a marketing standpoint, from an artist standpoint. Artists spend too much time taking their consumer thesis, right? Their consumer perspective and thinking it applies to the rest of this shit and it, and it doesn't. All right. Again, if you want to check out that full clip, you can check out the full conversation in brandmannetwork.com. But one big thing that I want people to grasp from this, when I talk about artists thinking like consumers, it really leads to the problem, right? The reason artists go through so much struggles is because they're trying to operate in the reality of the business based on the lies they were told about the business as a consumer, right? We all come into this world essentially, you know, as consumers and some would say sinners, but we all definitely come into this world as consumers because we're getting inundated with this information, this marketing. We think they're just TV shows that we enjoy and all that kind of stuff. We think they're just artists and everything's so pretty, right? We're seeing in front of the curtains, but as we hit a certain age, particularly if we're trying to be in the music industry, but just a lot of businesses and industries, we really start to see how these things work. Artists forget that. Because especially in the music industry or just entertainment, most consumers are only aware of those celebrity artists and musicians, right? So when those consumers decide they want to be an artist and musician, they're pursuing that route, that primary route, the only route of a musician and artist they, they became aware of, the most popular kind. And, and why that's most popular? Because it got the maximum visibility and it's being consumed directly by the consumers, right? The, the larger population. On the back end, though, obviously there's artists who are living completely off of sync deals. There's artists who are doing scores. There's songwriters. There's uh, people who are doing stuff on cruises. Like I know real people who made big money doing stuff, singing on cruises and making music for cruises, right? Two different people, by the way, right? There's so many different scenarios and routes in the music industry, but most people, right? Unless you really come up close to the business, you probably only are aware of the primary superstar, that primary celebrity, the Beyonce's, the Rihanna's, the Jay-Z's, the Taylor Swift's, and then of course you have those other people that might not be as big, but they're still on that side of things, right? The front-facing artist versus the artist who works the music business, right? And, and there's even a difference between music business and music industry, but I'll get into that in a whole nother video. So keep those things in mind because representation does matter, right? In the same way, artists pursue this one route because that's what they see it's the same reason why you have so many minorities saying like yo we need to see more of us in movies or us in these other positions because the kids they see these things and they believe they can be these things that's what artists are essentially doing right i see this and i'm only pursuing this but there's so much more stuff that you could be doing so many more opportunities so gotta stop thinking like a consumer, get out that mindset, realize you've been programmed in that mindset or trained to think that way or no, that, that's, I wouldn't even get that deep into this particular issue. I would just say you had a limited perspective of the whole pie. So start digging into those other things and truly consider and test 
if that other stuff will be right for you. And I'll leave it at that for this particular video. Again, check out the full conversation at brandmannetwork.com because I signed myself. And of course, you can get a lot of resources what helps you with marketing, branding, developing yourself. Go ahead and check it out. The link's in the description below if you're interested. But if you like this video, go ahead and the like button. Like it. You might as well share it. And if you're not subscribed, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button.